There are many grand challenges in science. But what is the grandest? Us. Biology is much more mathematical than mathematics. And indeed, technology is very important, but it's not exactly the same as science, nor is it the same as innovation. And very often, we mix up these concepts. So I think the fundamental questions will always be, I think, those of evolution. The origin of life is a notoriously difficult problem, but the scary thing is that actually it might very well be the case that we are the only intelligent life in the universe, but that means that the value of the biosphere is much greater in that case, and then our responsibility for it is much greater in that case. Now, everyone wants to know, um, is there any life on any of those places. There might be something swimming under the ice of Enceladus. There's probably nothing much on Mars. But things are much more exciting if we look beyond our solar system to the realm of the stars, far further than we can send any probe today. So I think this is going to be a golden era for science. Digitization or if you like, algorithms or computation, is bringing in, in science after science, powerful new instruments or powerful new technologies that can see whether it's what happened at the beginning of the cosmos, whether it's what's happening in the human brain or in animal brains, or what's happening, say, in the, in the oceans. We're getting scientific technologies that did not exist 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we're seeing new phenomena, and we're seeing complete new worlds we barely knew existed. One of the most exciting discoveries in recent years has been that most of the stars in the sky are orbited by retinues of planets, just like the sun is orbited by the Earth and the familiar planets. These planets aren't seen directly, they're seen by transits. If you look at a star, and if a planet moves across in front of it, it blocks out a bit of its light. So the brightness of the star dips every time. So if you see regular dips, you know a planet is coming round. It's true that the rate of background extinction of species in the biota is a few species per year. That's the background, that's for natural reasons. Now the human-induced extinction of species is much faster than that to the extent of 1,000 to 10,000 fold. If it continues like that, we might, in the year 2050, have lost 50%. That's one half of the existing species of the world. And that's a man-made mass extinction. So what you're looking at here is the brain of a zebrafish. This is a larva. It has around uh, 80,000 neurons. And each of these little dots here represents a single neuron. And it's glowing. It's glowing because there's a genetically encoded calcium dye that glows when the neuron is active. This, this particular zebrafish is embedded in agar so it can't move. And there is no sensory input. So this is really a, a case where the, there, you've shut off the sensory input and there's no motor output. You're just seeing what's going on in the brain of a spontaneously active brain of a zebrafish. Well, it's, the pattern is changing. Patterns that come and go both throughout the entire brain. Now, it's called spontaneous activity. What was that? There was a flash here. There's another flash. What's going on in the brain? We have no idea. We're, we're trying to interpret all this activity that's being internally generated that isn't connected to the world. If you were to ask this general question to any scientist, they will say the grand challenge is how can I get hold of money to do science? And I think that that's, that in itself is interesting. Science is, is something now which, which countries practice and are proud of. They have to spend a certain fraction of their GNP on what they call research and development. And this is the way they are measured in the league uh, throughout the world. And for the working scientist, that is his big challenge, is what can he do to get money 
to support his work. We have to make a special effort, and it's a continuous effort, I can assure you, of convincing them that unless investment goes into this kind of, call it fundamental science, call it frontier research, whatever the name, where you do not yet know what the outcome will be, is essential for the 21st century to continue. Science is the best invention that humanity has made to bring the future with all its enormous potential into the present. But it needs society and a close interaction with society to shape it. Thank you.